greenhouse gas emissions from corn-based ethanol use are 43% lower than those from gasoline, according to a USDA report published last week. The comparison is better than earlier estimates, including from the Environmental Protection Agency. The USDA found corn and ethanol production were more efficient than previously thought, and conservation practices such as cover crops use and reducing tillage were aiding the conversion. This was welcome news to an ethanol industry eager to find direction under Agriculture Secretary nominee Sonny Perdue and Scott Pruitt, President Donald Trump's choice to lead the EPA. It was also helpful because China, an emerging market for exports, could reportedly increase its import tariff on U.S. ethanol. Todd Neely covers the sector for DTN. He joined us Wednesday morning as Pruitt testified before Congress where he voiced his commitment to the renewable fuel standard. We started by asking Todd how ethanol views its future. Well, I think by and large, people are fairly encouraged um, about the new administrator and Scott Pruitt as it, as it refers to ethanol. Um, you know, there's been a lot of question about his background in oil. A lot of times he's come out um, opposed to the RFS, but um, you know, a group of Midwest senators have met with him recently uh, leading up to uh, the confirmation hearings. And one of the questions they raised was whether he's going to stand behind the RFS. And uh, by and large, we hear from them that he, uh, he's going to stand behind what the new president says. Uh, president Trump obviously has thrown support behind ethanol. Um, you know, a lot, of his, uh, a lot of his nominees for various parts of, of the federal government are uh, highly questionable. Um, there's no doubt about it. But um, I think, you know, what we're going to see coming up, though, is uh, there is going to be a move toward reforming the RFS. We're already seeing some action in the House, uh, certain committees saying that they're going to look at this issue a lot closer. And so there's a lot of doubt out there. There's a lot of question marks. But I think, by and large, um, there's, there are some reasons for hope. The highly questionable part of that being you don't exactly know where they stand, correct? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. What are the policy challenges that lie ahead for ethanol? Well, quite clearly, uh, corn ethanol's pretty much reached as high of production as it's going to go. Uh, you know, there's some, there's some thought that there's some more production coming online. I mean, we've seen some ethanol plants announce expansions. Uh, not a lot, but a little bit. Uh, you know, in terms of the RFS, though, it really is a future forward-looking type of uh, policy. That's what it was developed to be. Um, and I think one of the big concerns now is that if any reform takes place, what's it going to mean for cellulosic ethanol? A lot of these advanced technologies that uh, a lot of companies invested very many millions of dollars in. And so uh, that really is the thing. Corn ethanol, by and large, I think is going to be fine. I mean, we're seeing corn prices fairly low, as we know, uh, which is good for corn ethanol producers. And so, uh, but really, the policy itself going forward is, is really a question mark. The USDA report on greenhouse gas emissions of ethanol compared to regular gasoline, how beneficial could that be for the industry? I think it's huge because when you look at, um, when you look at the future of ethanol, you know, there are groups out there right now that are focusing on bringing more ethanol into the fuel supply in terms of, um, you know, its air emissions qualities. You know, as it compares to, to gasoline, it's very favorable in terms of air emissions. Uh, you know, and there's a lot of toxic, uh, toxic pollutants in gasoline and, and different things that ethanol can definitely reduce. Um, for quite a while, though, a lot of these groups have been after EPA to update uh, corn ethanol's life cycle emissions profile. And, uh, you know, for, for a very long time, they've said that it's, it's outdated. It doesn't, um, you know, it doesn't quite match up with what current ethanol production is. And so this USDA report basically uh, acknowledges that. And I think it really lays a policy ground going forward. Give me an update on where we are right now. Just a, a brief look at margins and some of the things that are happening overseas with China that could impact ethanol production here. Yeah, quite clearly, you know, there's reason for concern, I, I think, going forward because, um, you know, with the new administration, there's a lot of talk, a lot of rhetoric about China. Um, and so I think, you know, it's going to be interesting because the export market for ethanol right now is, is very important. Uh, we've kind of reached the limit on how much uh, corn ethanol is going to be in the, the, this gasoline supply at this point. Although there's some, cons you know, there's consideration for E15, E85, but quite clearly it's not, um, it's not settled. And so I think when you talk about China, um, you know, exports in general are important, but um, you know, the one thing we need to really look at is what are the other export markets if China is not there. And so I think. We're already seeing a lot of that within the industry, looking at, at a variety of new markets. 
For more information about the EPA's renewable fuel standard volumes for 2017, you can watch our interview with Scott Irwin from the December 9th episode of Market Journal.